वेलकम बैक माय नेम इज सत्यजीत साहू एंड वी आर इन एच पी सी एल भेल एंड टी एस पी एस सी सीरीज सो वेलकम आकांश आफरीद जयस अंस जूही यस विवेक समृद्धि रश्मिता यस सुरवी आफ्ताफ नैवेद्या सो स्टम स्टूडेंट्स आस्क मी सर व्हाट यू आर सींग दिस साइड एक्चुअली आई सी द कॉमेंट्स एंड नेम्स दिस साइड द कंप्यूटर इज हियर ओके सो वेलकम टू दिस सीरीज वी आर बीन सॉल्विंग क्वेश्चन ऑफ different subjects for upcoming hpcl well and ts psc series okay and today we'll be solving questions from highway engineering okay so i have included in highway i have included some questions from railway also and some questions from airport also so this we can say are the most probable 40 questions and then evening so today evening at 6 pm we have the formula revision for what your highway and surveying okay so formula revision for highway and surveying so we can say that morning will have 40 questions okay 40 questions now and evening will revise all the important formulas of highway and your survey so it will act as a perfect combination for your upcoming examination for these subjects so let us start the session without further delay so i request everyone welcome saurabh sri karti okay i request everyone that uh, write the answer in the comment section and this is the first question this is the first question according to irc recommendation the absolute minimum radius of curve for safe operation the design speed of 100 km per hour welcome nandini and bifol so please answer this question okay you can use calculator now in the examination calculator won't be allowed okay but uh, here at least uh, for faster calculation you can use the calculator tell me the right answer to this tell me the right answer to this the minimum radius how to find out the minimum radius when the design speed v is given to us so please find out the answer and tell me the answer in the comment section this is the first question the formula will use is see your formula is e plus f is equal to v square by 127 r right where r is in meter and v is in kilometer per hour now when the e and f are maximum yes when the e and f are maximum then i will get what the r is minimum okay the r is minimum okay so what is the answer to this so here i can say that the r minimum will be equal to v square which is what 100 square divided by the maximum value of e nothing is mentioned we'll assume what plane terrain we'll assume what plane terrain so for plane terrain e max is how much plane and rolling e max is 0.07 and for hilly and mountainous it is 0.1 So it will be 0.07 and f max is how much? F max is 0.15. Yes. So if I use this formula, how much I am getting? Tell me in the comment section. I'll use the calculator. Other people, what you are doing? Nobody is solving. So I will solve. Okay. <laughs> so 100 square divided by 0.22. You are getting how much? Okay. Some. Oh, 20. 127 is also there. Okay. 127 is also there. So how much are getting? Hmm. Three fifty-seven. Okay, <laughs> some printing mistake happening. Eh? <laughs> some printing mistake is there. Okay, we are getting how much? Three fifty-seven. Let us take it as three fifty-seven. Some printing mistake has happened in the first question only. No problem. Yes. Other calculations. I am also getting three fifty-seven. There is some calculation mistake. But the formula we'll use is this one. The formula we'll use is this one. Okay. E plus F max will be what? V square by 127 rm. Okay, this formula will use to find out the minimum radius. Next question is for a road of camber this much and design speed of 80 km per hour, the minimum radius of the curve beyond which no super elevation is needed. So now we know that super elevation is what tilting of the road. Okay. But if you are providing camber, okay, three percent, then I can say that this camber will act as what? This will act as the 
super elevation. This will act as a super elevation and I can say in place of super elevation I can write down what? The camber value which is 0 0.03 and this we will equate to what? The design super elevation which is how much? V square by 225 R. Okay. This is what? This is the design super elevation H per what? This is the design super elevation H per your IRC, right? Yes, for mixed traffic conditions. So whenever they ask you that camber is provided and no super elevation is provided, means what? The camber is acting as super elevation, just equate them, okay? Just equate to what? The camber to the design super elevation. Camber to the design super elevation. So how much are you getting there? Yes, 948. Yes, so here at least the option is, you know, matching. So this is the right answer, right? Here you have to just take care that the B has to be in kilometer and R will be in meter. So I can say the R will be equal to how much? Your B square, V is how much? 80. So 80 square divided by 225 and then 0 0.03. So remember that we will take what? We will take this design super elevation. Don't take V square by 127 R here. Okay. Don't take V square by 127 R here. It will be wrong. Okay. So this is the second question. Let us go to the third question. Okay, the value of off-tracking they have asked, okay. What is the value of off-tracking when a vehicle is negotiating a curve of radius 40 meter and wheelbase 7 meters. The wheelbase is given and the radius is given. The off-tracking is asked. Off-tracking of the vehicle is asked. So what is the off-tracking of this vehicle? Please answer. I will also solve, okay. You can use calculator now for faster calculation, but in the examination, they won't be providing you calculator, okay? So, what is the off-tracking? Oh, suppose, how much are you getting? Please write in the comment section. Santu was answering 0 0.61. Let us check. Yes, the answer is 0 0.6125. What is the equation? L square by 2R. L square by 2R, this is given as 7, 7 square by 2 into 40. So this we are getting as 0.6125 meter. Now in this question, suppose it is given two lane road. Suppose it is given two lane road and they are asking you off tracking. Then what will be the answer? If it is given a two lane road and they have asked the off tracking, then what is the answer? Tell me. If it is given a two lane road, Okay, and they have given, they are asking the off-tracking. What will be the answer? What will be the answer? Tell me here. Simply tell me, if they are given two-lane road, okay, and they are asking you off-tracking, what will be your answer? Your answer will be same. Off-tracking belongs to a particular vehicle. So, off-tracking remains same. Okay, the we can say the mechanical extra widening, yes, the mechanical extra widening that will be NL square by 2R. So this will become 2 into 0.6125, okay. So the off tracking belongs to the vehicle, whereas the extra widening belongs to the road. Understood now one vehicle, how many lanes are there? For one vehicle, the off tracking will come same only, right? Yes. Now, for the road, we are finding the mechanical extra widening. Then I have to multiply with the number of lanes. So this is an important thing you should know. Third question is over. Fourth question, length of summit curve. Okay. Stopping side distance is given. Okay. So this is your SSD. I can write down this as S. Okay, a summit curve is formed by 3% up gradient and 5% down gradient. Okay, so please find out the answer to this. Yes, so 3% up gradient, yes, 5% down gradient. I can say that this is the summit curve, right? So the formula is what? You will use ns square by 4.4. Why? Because SST is given. 
if it is OSD, then 9.6, right? Then 9.6. Here it is SSD, so 4.4. So this will be equal to, and is what the change in grade. Change in grade is how much? 3 minus of minus 5. That is 8%. I can take that as 0 0.08. So it is 0 0.08 into 128 square divided by 4.4. So how much are you getting this answer? Everyone, I'll also solve, okay? Because you might be solving wrongly or, okay? Sometimes, many times people commit the same mistake. Okay, it is 298. Very good. So, very straightforward questions they can ask, but you need to know the formula. Next, the fifth question. What is the value of headlight side distance? What is the value of headlight side distance? See, the headlight side distance is nothing but equal to what? Stopping side distance. See, the intermediate side distance is two times of your stopping side distance. But headlight side distance, which is considered for nighttime driving, that will be equal to what? Your stopping side distance only. So indirectly, they're asking you what? Stopping side distance. If they're asking you stopping side distance, that is very easy. Stopping side distance is what? That is equal to the V into T, okay, plus what? V square by 254F. Yes? So V, you see I have using 2V. This is what? In meter per second and this is capital is for kilometer per hour, right? So if I convert this 65 into meter per second, it will be how much? 65 into 5 by 18, right? Converting kilometer per hour to meter per second. And reaction time is given 2.5, yes? Then here I will use in kilometer per hour. 265 square, 254 and friction is given 0.36. So very straightforward question. How much we are getting? We are getting 91.4. Let me just check. 65 into 5 divided by 18 into 2.5. Okay. The first term I am getting 45.1. 45.1. Okay. And 40. So I am getting almost 91.4. Very straightforward question. Let us go to the next question. Okay. The recommendation for camber. The recommended camber for water bound macadam. WBM. What is the value? Recommended camber. Okay. See camber means the cross slope. Yes. This can be represented in what? It can be the slope can be represented in what? This slope can be represented in what? 1 in N. Right. 1 vertical is to n horizontal. So what is the answer? Many students are answering. Yes, it is B. Yes, it is B. Yes. So you can remember this that for cement concrete, cement concrete and you know, high bituminous, right? High bituminous. Yes. It varies from what? 1 by 60 in low rainfall to 1 by 50 in high rainfall, right? And then for thin bituminous, okay, thin bituminous, okay, it varies from what? You see 1 by 50 comes here, yes? 1 by 50 by 1 by 40. You can remember in this way, right? I have told earlier in many lectures. And then for WBM, okay, and gravel roads, right? I can take, you see this one, by 40 will come here, right? So it will be 1 by 40 to 1 by 33. Yes. And if it is earth road, if it is earth road, yes, this 1 by 33 will come here and then 1 by 25. Yes. So if you can remember simply, you know, 60, 50, 40, 33, 25, these numbers actually remember this whole table, right? You see, 60, 50, 40, 33, and 25. You remember this, you see, you can remember the whole table. Okay. Next question, the seventh question. Right of way is the summation of width of, right of way is the summation of width of which, you know, cross-sectional elements, okay, cross-sectional elements of the road. Tell me, the right of way is the summation of width of which cross-sectional elements? B, yes, it is B, yes. 
so we have the carriage way on which the you know the vehicles are running yes then we have the shoulders right shoulder is for you know some gap we give right for parking purpose okay another gap should be there so after this this is what the carriage way c for carriage way suppose and these are the shoulders then we maintain some margin right then we maintain some margin yes and this is known as what the right of way is known as what the right of way this is also known as you see this is also known as road boundary line is also known as what road boundary line so i can say right of way is the distance between the road boundary line right then after that we have what the setback distance right after that we have what setback distance okay setback distance is provided so that we don't have problems in the inner side of the curves right in vision right so setback distance is there okay and then this is known as what the building line because all the buildings and constructions can happen beyond the building line and finally we have what finally we have the control line means which whichever authority controls that road suppose it is a national highway then nhi is controlling then they will have control within this control line so all these questions they can ask so you should know then next thing is this eighth question so gradient on a highway is given okay this is the gradient and the radius is given they are asking you find out the grade compensation you can say this is the initial gradient okay this is the initial gradient in percentage it will be 5% right in percentage it is 5% 1 by 20 into 100 and this is greater than 4 that means i have to go for your grade compensation now what is the grade compensation here tell me what is the answer what is the answer what is the formula first use that and find out the answer grade compensation it will be what either 75 by r or 30 plus r by r whichever is you know minimum so when i say 75 by r it will be 75 by 200 and this is what 30 plus r 30 plus 200 divided by what your 200 So what values you are getting here? The first one is 230 divided by 200. So I am getting that as very high value of you know 230 divided by 200. I am getting you know 1.15. And this I am getting 75 divided by your 200. That is how much? That is 0.375. So I'll choose the minimum one, right? I will choose the minimum one. Yes. the grade compensation is what the grade compensation formula is this subjected to a maximum of this much i can say right i can say in this way right yes so the formula is this but it has to be less than this i can say this has to be less than equal to this yes so what happened it became more so i will take this as the answer so they have asked the grade compensation yes so this is the closest answer right if they ask the compensated gradient yes if they ask the compensated gradient understand this difference that would have been how much 5 minus 0.375 that is equal to i can say 4.625 right if they have asked what compensated gradient but they have asked what grade compensation grade compensation means how much reduction happened compensated gradient means after reduction what is the value so understand these two terms in answers they will give both of them you see all the answers are given to confuse you right <laughs> understood this question very simple question but yes people get confused so i have discussed them in details the next question question number 9 okay the rise of crown with respect to the edges okay so if you are providing the camber like this okay if you are providing this camber like this then this rise right this rise of the crown this is the crown the topmost position with respect to the edges you respect to the edge means with respect to this only right so this they have asked suppose this i am naming as suppose i am calling this as um, 
Suppose I am calling this as W, suppose, W. Okay. So, after that answer, W. So, how to remember? Don't remember the formula very easy, actually. See, this will be L by 2, right? If total length of the road is L, then obviously this will be L by 2. Yes. Now, we know that when the camber is provided, the slope is what? 1 is to N. So, you can see that this triangle and this triangle are similar. So, I can say W by L by 2 is equal to 1 by N. Or I can say W is how much? L by 2. And remember this. If you don't remember, you can always, you know, compare and derive also. So, I can say here, this W, the rise of crown with respect to edges will be what? The total length is given what? 7. Length or I can say width, right? I can write down C. Here I can write down L or I can write down B also, width, right? So, 7 meter. So, the ask in meter, so 7 meter divided by 2 into N, the N they have given as 50. So, I am getting an answer of 0 0.07 meter. Okay. Now, this formula holds good even if it is given parabolic profile, even if they have given parabolic profile or your linear profile of camber. So, whatever profile they give, you can apply this equation. See, books write this equation. You might have seen this equation. Y is equal to 2x square by something, something they give, right? 2x square by n. Yes, I think something like that they give, right? For parabolic profile. So, even if you put that, okay, suppose this is your y, then if you put this, x is how much here? x is l by 2, right? So, it becomes l square by 4, something they give like this, 2x square, some formula, this, some weird formula they give, nw, okay, nw, what is this formula, some, some weird formula they give, I don't remember that formula, I don't use that also, because if you use that formula also, you will get the same answer, yes, even you can try that formula and you can use even if you use that formula, you get the same answer. So, why to use and get the same answer, okay? So, I use this formula only. It will be applicable for everyone. Next question is the 10th question. Yes, some theoretical questions also they will ask. Which of the following options provide the correct sequence of engineering survey which is done for a new highway alignment project? The order is asked, okay? The order of stages of engineering survey. What is the order followed? What is the order followed? C, very good, yes. First we have the map study, then reconnaissance, and then preliminary survey, and then final location and detail survey. Sometimes we feel that, you know, preliminary survey happens first. No, that happens in the start stage. Next is your 11th question, very straightforward question from your traffic engineering, yes. From the linear green shield model, okay. So, answer this question. Very straightforward question. Linear green shield model. Yes. yes. So, U is given as 55 minus 0.44 K. Yes. So, how to solve this question? To solve this question, you have to find out what? The BSF. Yes. And the KJ. How to find? Very easy actually. Yes. You can take, you know, u is equal to 0. When u is equal to 0, I get k is equal to kj, right? So, k will be how much? 55 by 0. 0.44, right? And when BSF, one, how, what, how will find out? I will take k is equal to 0. So, when k is equal to 0, then I will get the u as what? The VSF that I am getting how much? 55, right? So, I can easily use the maximum formula that is what? VSF into KJ upon 4. That is equal to 55 into 55 divided by what? 0. 0.44 into 4. If you solve this, how much are you getting? Okay. 1718. Very good. So, 55 into 55 divided by 0. 0.44 and further divided by 4, I am getting a value of 1. This closes to this. So, again, very straightforward question. Very straightforward question. And in this question, they can ask, you know, what is the speed at maximum velocity, at the maximum flow? The speed, if they ask you to see, they will ask you speed at maximum flow. What will be the answer? Speed at maximum flow. What will be the answer to this? The speed at maximum flow will be BSF by 2. That is how much? 55 by 2, 
27.5 किलोमीटर पर आवर और इफ दे आस्क यू व्हाट इज द डेंसिटी व्हाट इज द डेंसिटी एट मैक्सिमम फ्लो द डेंसिटी एट मैक्सिमम फ्लो विल बी केजे बाय टू दैट विल बी कॉल्ड टू कॉल्ड हाउ मच केजे इज दिस वन सो आई कैन से 55 डिवाइड बाय पॉइंट एट एट राइट 55 डिवाइड बाय पॉइंट एट एट आई एम गेटिंग अ वैल्यू ऑफ 62.5 यू सी व्हेन यू मल्टीप्लाई 62.5 एंड 27.5 यू वि� so all these small small questions they can ask. Next question is question number 12 from your Webster signal design. Very straightforward. Webster signal design. Yes, so we have to mix the preparation both small small numericals, straightforward numericals and theory also. Therefore, I have mixed everything. Yes. So here the optimum cycle length is what? We know this very straightforward formula. 1.5 the total loss time plus 5 divided by 1 minus the summation of critical flow ratios. Now you see the total loss time per signal cycle directly they have given for the cycle. So directly they have given L, right? Yes. Then you see the saturation flow is given. Okay. And this is two phase system. And these are the flows in the individual, we can say, phases. Yes. So I can say this is 500 by 1600. Yes. Plus 300 by 1600 is giving me what? the y sum of flow ratios and this is by the way 800 by 600 is how much 0.5 so i need not use the calculator also this will be 1.5 into total loss time is 16 plus 5 divided by 1 minus y is 0.5 so i can say this is 2 into 1.5 into 16 plus 5 so i can say this will be 24 29 into 2 that is how much 58 seconds you see without calculator also we can solve this type of questions Next question, okay, some theoretical question, answer this, question number 13, answer this question, straightforward, please answer. On traffic signs, So they are not discussing only that thing, what else they can ask, that also I am discussing. Hmm, what is the answer to this? Others, hmm. bottle is coming. <laughs> Others, D, 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 regulatory are what? Regulatory are the mandatory signs. Okay, regulatory means what? You have to follow or prohibitory signs. Restriction, stop, give way, all these are what? Prohibitory or restriction or mandatory, yes? So one is a warning signs means what? It is just a warning, narrow bridge, okay, all these things are what? Crossroads and all, it's a warning, say, railway crossing, yes? Railway crossings and all, that is what? And informative sign means, okay? like some facility, hotel, okay, and you know, schools, or suppose, you know, there is some uh, petrol pump, and this is what information. So this is straightforward what this. Now, what else they can ask from this? They can ask the shapes. And remember, regulatory have what? Circular shapes, right? Regulatory have what? Circular shapes. Warning signs of triangular shapes, right? And informatory have what? Rectangular shapes. They can ask the shapes also okay they can ask the shapes also yes the next is 14th question in the regulatory or mandatory okay we have some exceptions one is the stop sign and one is the give way sign right now give way is what give way is inverted triangle like this this is this is what actually this is mandatory only but it's an exception and stop sign is octagonal octagonal so you have to remember all these shapes also, they can ask shape. Now suppose they give, you know, some sign, okay, in the examination, they give some sign, okay. Suppose in examination, they give a sign. We don't know the sign, okay, suppose something like this is given, okay. We don't know the sign, okay, because we can't remember all the signs, right. Can we remember all the signs? No, we cannot remember all the signs. Now suppose such a sign is given, right. They are asking which belong to which category, then what will your answer tell me? 
Yes. Suppose the sign is given, you are not able to understand what is this sign. Okay. But they have asked which belongs to which category out of the three types of, you know, signs. Then what is your answer to this? Tell me. Even if you don't know the meaning of the sign, what will be the answer? This belongs to which category? This belongs to cautionary. Yes. This belongs to cautionary. From the shape, we can detect it to be of belonging to which category. So no need to remember all the signs. Okay. We cannot remember 50, 60 signs. That is not required. Okay. Just remember the shapes. Circular for mandatory, regulatory, prohibitory. See, regulatory means what? What is meaning of regulatory? Means regulations are there. Means what? Law is there. If you are not following the instructions given in the signs, then law can act against you. There can be regulations against you, right? Prohibitory means you are prohibited, okay? It's a mandatory, you have to follow. It's not an option. Cautionary means what? You have to, you are, you are, you are, you are warned, okay? A warned. Suppose there is written that, you know, sharp edge ahead and you are not following it, then it is your personal risk. Okay, they cannot penalize you just because you are not, you know, careful there. Yes, but if it's written no U-turn and you're taking a new turn means they can penalize you. And information is what is just for, you know, informations like, you know, hotel and petrol pump and all those things. Okay, so all these things should understand. Okay, next question, 14th question, 15th question, sorry, 14th is over, yeah. 15th question, very straightforward question. If the length of the vehicle is, C L is the length of the vehicle. C is the clear distance between the two consecutive vehicles. Or I can say stopping tight distance can be taken. And B is the speed of the vehicles. The maximum number of vehicles, okay, in vehicle per hour. Now, vehicle per hour means what? It is your flow, right? They are asking you the maximum flow or capacity. Yes. What is the answer? The maximum flow or capacity capacity of flow yes that will be how much see first of all you understand that what is flow flow is q q is what density into v that means v term has to be there in the numerator game over <laughs> yes or no see dense this uh, flow is what flow is k into v density into your speed okay or average speed i can say so v is there yes so option is this now, K is what? K is 100 by 1000 by the center to center spacing, right? So, center to center spacing, right? So, I can say center to center spacing will be how much? You see, the center to center spacing will be how much? The clear distance plus you see L by 2 here, L by 2 here. So, this becomes how much? L plus C. Understood? So, this is your answer. Very simple, right? Very simple, right? Very simple. Yes. Next is your question number 16. So answer this. Which of the following is taken as the highest safe speed limit derived from spot speed study for a highway? Right? What is the highest safe speed limit? What is the answer to this? Ah, jumped. Everybody jumped. They are asking you safe limit. You see, when you plot right when you are plotting right when you are plotting here you are plotting what the speed versus percentile right the speed versus percentile then i get a curve like this right so here you see we have three limits first one will be the lower one that is how much percentile 15 percentile i can call that as v15 yes then we have a safe limit, upper limit, that is V85, that is 85 percentile. You design for 98 percentile, yes? So the design is done for 98 percentile. So this 98 percentile is what? It is the design speed, yes? But on the roads, okay? Suppose on the road it is written like this, okay? You know, suppose it is written 90 km per hour. What is this? Tell me. This is your design speed or your safe, uh, highest safe speed or upper speed, safe speed. It is design speed or tell me 
your higher safe speed tell me what is this when in the road it is written this this is what tell me what is this this is the higher safe speed yes because on the roads if you write na design speed then people will start crossing it people have this you know very nice uh, mentality that you know whatever is written we will break that <laughs> yes people have this nice mentality so what we do is that what we do what how we fool people is how the designers you know they do they tell that okay they will write 90 so the person will feel that okay i'll cross 90 so if they cross 90 suppose they are driving at 95 they will feel that i have crossed 90 but actually the design speed will be some 110 or something the design speed lo 110 so by this you are ensuring the safety to the people so design speed is higher but you will write as safe limit how much the 85 percentile yes the 85 percentile everybody understood this thing so you have to see what is written in the question if it is written design speed then that is 98 percentile the so design is done h for 98 percentile but the upper speed limit which is written in the roads that is at h per 85th percentile understood the answer is this okay very good next question 17th question straight forward question answer me in a cement concrete pavement double bars are used in where in a cement concrete pavement in a cement concrete pavement we have two types of you know joints i have explained in one video expansion joint contraction joint longitudinal joint transverse joint okay so we use double bars where tell me where we use double bars hmm construction joint ha <laughs> for where you are studying all this in expansion joint we use this is the longitudinal joint okay this is the longitudinal joint and this is what this is the transverse joint right in transverse joint we have two options one are the contraction joint and one are the expansion joint in both expansion and contraction means i can say for transverse joint i provide what double bars okay i provide what double bars these are what double bars so double bars are provided in expansion joint okay in your longitudinal joint we provide what the tie bars in the longitudinal joint there are what your tie bars so remember this tie bars for longitudinal joint and double bars for your transverse joint in transverse joint we have both expansion and contraction now about this expansion and contraction joint i have taken one full video you can always see and understand how to find out the spacing of expansion and contraction joint i have taught also next question is 18 on the critical stress combination of rigid pavements okay students get confused a lot here <laughs> so i have decided to discuss this thing so what is the critical combination of stresses okay during summer mid day right during the summer mid day tell me what is the answer to this Four ninety others, others. Hmm, confused. Okay, I will tell you. See, in the edge location, we have two combinations. Okay, one combination is for summer. Okay, one combination is for winter. One combination is for winter. Okay, remember this. Now, when we take summer. we'll take the stress due to load plus warping no problem and then for winter we will take load plus warping no problem now see suppose we have a slab like this 
okay and below that there is uh, you know the concrete slab below that there will be subgrade or base or sub base yes so now let us understand this i'll explain to you see in summer what will happen in summer in summer what will happen it will try to expand na yes in summer it will try to expand right it will try to expand so the stresses will be what tell me what will be the stresses tell me the frictional stresses will act in this manner right yes the frictional stresses will be acting in this manner yes or no yes or no yes now in winter what will happen tell me in winter what will happen in winter it will try to contract it will try to contract and therefore i can say the stresses will be acting like this yes the stresses will be acting like this so winter the stresses are what tensile right you see in winter the stresses are tensile right the frictional stresses everybody is clear in this or not tell me frictional stress in summer and winter so in summer can i say the frictional stress are compressive and in winter the frictional stresses are tensile everybody is clear in this or not just tell me this you understood this then everything you have understood so you see load and warping we will get both as tensile okay for this combinations now when you take the summer combination what will happen it is compressive so i will subtract yes and in winter you can see that it is tensile so i will add because the concrete pavement will be designed for net tension na yes or no concrete slabs are designed for net tension because concrete compressive strength is anyhow high right so it can take the compression and therefore it is important to find out what the net tension so if i am interested in finding the net tension you to load and warping i am getting tension tension so no problem but when we am seeing the friction part for this summer combination i am getting compression and for winter combination i am getting tension so if i am interested in finding the net tension what i will do i will add load plus warping and subtract friction because that is compressive in summer yes and then load warping and plus friction because the frictional stress is tensile in the friction understood now we feel that we feel that summer it is expanding so it is tensor no it will try to expand but the friction will act in this manner to keep it in the original position understood so this get students get confused when they think that you know summer it is expanding that means what tensile no it will try to expand and the frictional stresses will act opposite to it and in winter it will try to contract and frictional stresses will act opposite to it okay so here we can say 210 290 500 minus 10 this yes if this question was asked for what winter then this would have been the right answer right if it was asked for the winter combination right understood very good okay winter and edge winter and edge yes if the right corner and winter corner and winter then the answer is load plus your warping only because your at corner frictional stresses are zero corner frictional stresses are zero so if they ask you corner and winter then load plus warping if they ask you winter plus edge then this now you will tell sir not nowhere is mentioned edge in the question you will ask that nowhere it is mentioned edge in the question but they have mentioned summer and in summer only one combination is there na you see edge and summer only one combination is there understood everything you understood now why we are getting frictional stress zero because if you see the variation of frictional stress is it something like this right at the corners we get zero at the mid span we get the maximum frictional stress okay very good so everything about the combination we understood very good 
let us go to the next question that is 19th the equivalent radius of resisting section that is what b of a 20 centimeter slab this is what h if the ratio of radius of wheel load distribution that is what a and the thickness of the slab h is 2 so they have given a by h is equal to 2 they have given h is equal to 20 centimeter they are asking you b what is your answer tell me okay so this formula goes how it, how this formula goes this formula goes like this you see if a by h is less than 1.724 yes okay then we take b is equal to root under 1.6 a square plus h square minus 0.675 h yes we take this as a formula for b but if it is more than that if it is more than that then we take b simply equal to a here you can see a by h is what 2 that is greater than 1.724 so b will be simply equal to a and h is given so a from here will be how much 2h that is 2 into 20 giving me how much your 40 centimeter understood this thing or not very straightforward but students do get confused okay now b is equal to a here the data given is h 20 centimeter thick slab okay 20 centimeter thick slab now what are this b and a many students get confused you see, actually if you see, suppose we have a tire here, tire load is coming and this is the surface. So if you see this contact area, if you see this contact area, it will be something like this, right? It will be something like this. Yes. Now what we do, we take it as a circle, circular area, sorry. We take this as a circular area. And the circular area, the radius is A. You can say this is the radius of will load distribution okay but actually what happens the whole area won't be in contact okay only a certain portion of the area will be in contact this is known as what the resisting section and then the b will be what the equivalent radius of resisting section you can see that b becomes equal to a when a by h is more than this or if it is less than this, then what do we do? We find out in this manner. Okay. Now, how to find out this A? How to find out here A? You could, suppose A A by H is not given. Suppose something is there. A we have to find. It is very easy. You see the wheel load will be W. And suppose the tire pressure is P. So, what will be your tire pressure? The tire pressure P will be equal to this wheel load W this wheel load w divided by the area na, total area upon which it's acting circular so pi by 4 a square so if you know your tire pressure you know your wheel load you can find out what the a so all these small small formulas are important i discussed question number 20 please answer this question fast theoretical question on the tests on aggregates right tests on aggregates Please the right answer, please tell in the comment section. Crushing test, Los Angeles abrasion test, soundness test, and angularity test. Okay. Write in the comment section. D, very good. Crushing we do for strength. Abrasion we do for hardness. Soundness we see for weathering or durability. And angularity number or angular test we do for the save. Okay. So this is the right answer. Next question, 21st question. The penetration test on bitumen is used for determining its. What's the right answer? Please be fast. Okay. Come on, fast. The penetration test on bitumen is done to determine its what? It is the grade. You see the penetrations are in 0.1 mm. 
the units are in what? 0.1 mm. Yes. So if the penetration is 80 units or 90 units, whatever, okay, or 100 units, suppose, it is 100 units, right? Then that means the grade is grade 100, okay? So we find out the grade using what? This penetration test. Next question, 22 question. Which of the following property of bitumen is related to Pensky-Martin test? So what is this Pensky-Martin test? It's related to which property? Please answer first. Pensky-Martin test. Yes, it is the flash and fire test. This we conduct for what? For your safety, fire safety. Yes. And we use this apparatus. Okay, the name of the apparatus. So name of apparatus are also important when we are seeing the test things. So in test, you know, three things are important. When you study a test, then you three things only have to remember. No need to go into ultra details. First thing you remember that why that test is conducted. Second is the apparatus used and some details of apparatus, not too much of details. And third is that the results which are accepted. Three things will be asked. Next thing is 23. While conducting the softening point on test on bitumen, the result is expressed as. Means when I'm talking about, you know, softening point, then this softening point, what we are measuring, what unit we are measuring, what thing we are measuring, right? The softening point, what we are measuring? Yes, we are measuring the temperature. Softening point is also known as what? Ring and ball test, right? So what do we do? We have a ring in which we have this film of bitumen and we keep a steel ball. So we increase the temperature and we measure the temperature at which this particular film, it gets softened in such an extent that this ball falls down. That means what? It is the degree of what? Softness which is obtained at a particular temperature. Or I can say the susceptibility to temperature changes, right? Yes. So if suppose some bitumen has less softening point, means what? At less temperature it is getting softened. That means it has less thermal susceptibility means what it is you know getting you know uh, means uh, softened very easily yes next thing is 24 24 is what which of the following binders is best suited for repair work of bituminous uh, payments during rainy weather during rainy weather what's the answer to this very straightforward questions now so some numericals we saw, now some straightforward questions. Very fast, please tell. Yes, we use our what? Bitumen emulsion. See, cutback bitumen also we use for repair work, but is mentioned what? Rainy weather. Okay, rainy weather, bitumen emulsion is very useful. Why? Because you see there is no tension of heating and all. Just mix, you know, and then put, okay? So answer is bitumen emulsion. Next question, 25. In Marcel testing of bituminous mixes, as the bitumen content increases, the flow value, answer me. So in your Marcel test, we study various graphs, right? In the x-axis, we have the percent as bitumen and in the y-axis, we have different parameters. Now, what is this flow? So if you have a Marcel mix, right, and you're applying the load, okay, what will happen? It will fail at a certain load, right? It will fail at a certain load. So flow is this deformation. Flow is what? This is the deformation at failure. And obviously the flow will be indicated in what? Mm. So what is the answer here is? It increases monotonically. See, if there is more bitumen content, if there is more bitumen content, this deformation will be more, right? Yes. If there is more bituminous content, this deformation will be more. So it will keep on increasing only. Yes. Now you are telling about this thing. This what? Increases then first decreases. This we get for what? This we get for unit weight and the stability value. Unit weight and then stability value. Stability value is what? It is in kilogram. It is the load at which this particular sample is failing. So this curve we get for unit weight and for stability value. But for flow, flow is the deformation. Now obviously most of the bitumen will deform more right at failure, right? So remember it is what? Increases monotonically. And how to remember? 
just understand what is flow first right if you understand what is flow a deformation at failure so obviously more is bitumen content it will deform more at failure right yes next question is 26th question answer this question when the bituminous surfacing is done on already existing black top or over existing cement concrete road then that type of coat is known as what okay that type of coat is known as what what's the answer to this Mm-hmm. So many people get confused within seal coat and uh, this. The answer is actually tack coat. Let us understand this. See, if we have you know non-bituminous uh, pavement like you know WMM or you know gravel or you know some sand finish is there. So this is what pervious layer, right? So this is pervious. So when it is pervious, is there? So we provide this prime coat. We provide what prime coat? I'm drawing in brown. Bitumen is not brown, but the background is uh, black. So if I use bituminous black, then nothing will be visible. So this is the layer. If you are putting here, this is known as prime coat. Okay, this is known as what? Prime coat. Okay. Now existing black top. Existing means it's a old thing, right? It's a old road, right? It's a old road which is you know. Uh, you know, damage little bit. Okay, so it's an existing. It's important. Existing, you know, black top means what? Bituminous, right? Black top means what? Bituminous road. Okay, or existing what? Existing what? Existing. Try to understand. It's old road. Okay, existing cement concrete road. Okay, so can I say these are impervious? Right? This will be relatively impervious. Yes or no? This will be relatively impervious compared to WBM. Yes. So in this, if you are providing, okay, a layer that known as what tack coat. That is known as what tack coat. Now, when you are constructing a fresh pavement, constructing a fresh pavement means what? You have the subgrade, right? If you have the subgrade, then we have what the sub base and then base and then oh, on top of that if you are providing a surface layer okay so on top of surface layer we provide this seal coat yes this seal coat actually acts as what as there are many you know uses the main use is to provide the skid resistance right so this is what the seal coat so seal coat we are providing when we are constructing the pavement now existing pavement then tack coat and then prime coat is on impervious and tack coat is on sorry tack, uh, prime coat is on pervious and tack coat is on impervious understood this very simple differences but we do get confused 27 the flakiness index of coarse aggregate used for bituminous concrete and surface bituminous concrete is the best uh, you can say best bituminous layer okay so there are many layers okay on which they can ask you these values but at least remember for what the best bituminous layer which we use as you know the base layer okay so what is this flakiness index maximum these are what i can say this is the maximum flakiness index means what if it is more than this will reject it the answer is 25% if it is more than 25% will reject okay if we are having what's in thickness index next is your 28th question here it is what the stripping value same bituminous construction only surface okay so for maximum stripping value of aggregate what is stripping value what is stripping value what we do we provide a coat of bitumen on the aggregates right right and then we you know keep it in water for 24 hours and we'll see what is Stripping value. It is what? Maximum stripping value is what? No, it is still 25%. It is still 25%. This 1% is what? It is the water absorption. This 1% is what? It is the water absorption. Remember this, okay? 1% is water absorption, right? And what is this 12%? This 12% is the loss. Okay, 12 per loss for your soundness test. For your soundness test, 
if you are using sodium sulfate right if you are deep keeping the aggregates in sodium sulfate so this is the loss 12 percent allowable loss and if you are keeping you know magnesium sulfate then this is what 18 percent so all these values you should remember okay all these values you remember i have given some more values you can also remember at least remember this one 29 i am trying to solve the most probable which are maximum you know probability of being asked in the examination so bankel beam beam deflection method yes we know this right yes here we find out the average deflections and then we use it for oh you know overlay design so in overlay design using a bankel beam method so we are doing what what over what tell me what over what tell me what's the answer to this yes karti is correct it is flexible overlays over flexible payments now what is overlay we have an existing old payment okay existing old payment okay on top of it we are constructing a fresh payment yes so obviously its design will be different from you know completely fresh payment and that is governed by what many methods but when we are doing see these two things can be different you see this is flexible this is flexible or this is flexible this is what the rigid or this is rigid this is rigid right or i can say this is uh, rigid this is flexible right many things are there so the most commonly found is the existing is flexible and this is also flexible and this is known as the overlay overlay because it is laid over an existing old so overlay so what is written flexible overlay on flexible payment understood 30 question okay so we'll go into little bit of you know little bit of what your railway engineering also okay so you have solved many questions for many parts okay so railway engineering also yes so 20 meter chain length is given and you know 600 meter radius of curve what is the degree of curve okay i have explained many places so degree of curve depends on you know we have 20 meter arc length or you know 30 meter arc length yes so if you have 20 meter arc length or 30 meter arc length the degree will vary right so here i can suppose this is degree this is degree so here what will happen the degree will be this will be r theta r theta right so i can say r into degree will be how much will be equal to 20 yes 20 so from here d will be equal to 20 by r but this i will get in what r theta or can say r d right but this i'll get in radian so i'll convert into what into degree by multiplying what 180 by pi yes and here same thing degree will be how much 30 into 180 by pi r yes so if i find this answer we're getting close to how much 2 degree because it's given 20 meter chain length so if you apply this formula okay it's close to how much? How much I guess this value actually? It's so actually 20 into 180 divided by pi. Actually get 1146. Okay. 1146 is taken approximately 1150 by R. Yes, approximately 1150 by R. So you see it is 600. So no need to remember also, right? So no need to calculate also. If you remember this value, then you can see that it will be, you know, radius is so almost what? 2 degree. Yes. And this value, how much we get? If you see this is what 30 into 180 divided by your pi this is 1718 so earlier they were taking 1720 by r okay now you know they are taking 1750 by r also they have increased the you know this arc length a bit and they're taking how much now they're taking 1750 by r but some questions they ask h per this also you can see the question and you can answer h per that okay okay next thing <laughs> the next thing is this is question number 30 31 okay grade compensation bg means broad gauge the ruling gradient means the existing gradient right or initial gradient is this then we have a three degree curve okay so the permissible compensated gradient right so first of all, we have to find out the grade compensation. Now the grade compensation in case of railways is different, right? In case of railways, it is different from what we have seen in case of highway. So the grade compensation will be how much? It will be actually here. It is a broad gauge. So 0.04% per degree. So you have 3 degree. Now see, this is for your BG, right? For MG, how much I get? 
for mg i get this to be 0 0.03 percent per degree right so remember this yes so how much are getting this okay okay so how much are getting this tell me that compensation getting 0.12 percent now see this is uh, 1 150 this is be 120 into 100 if you find out this is 0.4 percent right so i can say the permissible gradient will be how much 0.4 minus 0 0.12 that is 0.28 percentage so you can find out 0.28 percent is what 0.28 divided by 100 so then what you do you divide both uh, both things by 0 0.28 yes so if you divide both things by 0 0.28 you're getting how much 357 something okay so very straightforward you should know this okay 30 second question okay shift of a curve in case of transition curve okay and a circular curve okay so we know that we have a straight portion if you have a straight portion and we have a circular portion circular curve yes so what we do we go for a transition curve yes so to just to match them we have a shift concept right so we shift the curve right so this shift is how much it is length of the transition curve divided square divided by 24 hour. we know this formula but straightforward formulas are asked so we start just revising them very fast so you see length of the curve is how much it is given 240 so 240 square divided by your 24 into r is 600 you can do it without calculator also 240 into 240 divided by 24 into 600 so how much i am getting i am getting 10 getting cancelled 4 meter i am getting it's applicable for both railways and your highways okay next is 33 okay some things on the airport also they will ask in the examination now in airport we have the runway length corrections right so it is given that in runway length corrections first we apply what first we apply the elevation correction yes then we apply what temperature corrections and all these corrections are what sequential they are what sequential means first you have to apply elevation then you have to apply temperature and then only you can apply what the gradient correction so it is given that after these two corrections the length you are getting is 2845 and the gradient is 0.5 percent now what is the correction what is the gradient correction the gradient correction is 20 percent per 1 percent gradient this is what the gradient correction this is the correction yes so what is written here it is written 0.5 gradient yes 0.5 percent gradient so i can say here the gradient correction will be how much the gradient correction will be 10 percent yes half of it because the gradient is here 0.5 percent so i can say gradient correction is one 10 percent and already this is given so can i say the final answer will be how much it will be 1.1 1 .1 times of 2845 right 10 percent correction means 10 percent increase so how much i am getting 1.1 1 .1 height because 10 percent increase so how much i getting 3130 yes straight forward thing should remember straight clause you can ask straight clauses also the next one is 34 the next one is 34 the monthly mean of maximum daily temperature and monthly mean of the average daily temperature are 49 and 40 what is the airport reference temperature also known as what art now see this many students get confused in this formula so i'll just give you one small hint okay whenever you're finding art na they will give two temperatures just remember two temperatures whatever is written doesn't matter this is small plus large minus small by three just remember this much yes <laughs> okay you see this is the average of maximum daily temperature this is the average of average daily temperature so people get confused which is what which is what no worry they will give a small value this is 40 and they will give a large value just remember small plus large minus small by three that's it so this is how much this is 43 degrees centigrade very good let's see the next question 35th question yes the runway the runway at sorry 450 above mean sea level right and the basic runway length is given as 1800 the approximate corrected runway length for elevation we know that the correction is how much 
फॉर एलिवेशन सेवन परसेंट पर थ्री हंड्रेड मीटर यस सो हियर इट इज फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी मीटर अब मीन सी लेवल राइट सो आई कैन से द करेक्शन विल बी हाउ मच द करेक्शन विल बी इक्वल टू सेवन बाई थ्री हंड्रेड इंटू फोर फिफ्टी यस सी फॉर थ्री हंड्रेड मीटर इट इज दिस मच फॉर वन मीटर इट विल सेवन बाई थ्री हंड्रेड सो फॉर फोर फिफ्टी सेवन बाई थ्री हंड्रेड इंटू फोर फिफ्टी यस सो हाउ मच यू गेटिंग दिस यू गेटिंग दिस एज टेन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट राइट सो आई कैन से द करेक्टेड आंसर विल बी हाउ मच टेन पॉइंट फाइव सो वन पॉइंट वन जीरो फाइव इंटू एटीन हंड्रेड राइट सो इट इज क्लोज टू हाउ मच ओके क्लोज टू वन गेट दैट नेक्स्ट इज थर्टी सिक्स क्वेश्चन सो वेरी सिंपल थ्योरेटिकल क्वेश्चन द परसेंटेज ऑफ टाइम इन अ ईयर ड्यूरिंग विच द क्रॉस विंड कॉम्पोनेंट रिवेन विद इन इट्स लिमिट वट इज दिस सपोज वी हैव अ एयरप्लेन राइट वी हैव एन एयरप्लेन लाइक दिस ओके आई एम ड्रॉइंग द टॉप व्यू आई एम ड्रॉइंग द टॉप व्यू राइट द क्रॉस विंड कॉम्पोनेंट मीन्स वॉट You see the wind is suppose blowing like this. The crosswind component will be this component, and this component is not good for the flight operation, right? So this crosswind component, yes, the crosswind component, yes, should be within the limits, right? Should be within the limits. Now we cannot have this within the limits all the time, right? Yes, we cannot control the nature. Yes, so this should be within the limits. and the percentage of time it remains within the limit is known as what wind coverage yes and ideally this wind coverage should be what greater than 95% means what that the wind coverage in an area should be greater than 95% or the orientation of the runway should be such that the wind coverage should come what more than 95% means the crosswind component remains within the limits for 95% of the time that will be what good for your flight operations the 37th the magnitude of super elevation in indian railways for broad gauge yes now super elevation in railways known as what cant now what is this cant this cant e will be what in case of railways it is g b square by 127 r is the formula now you see here For broad gauge, what we'll get? I'll get 1.676 as the g, right? This g for pure broad gauge is how much? It is 1.676 meter. For your standard gauge, it is how much? It is 1.435 meter, right? For your meter gauge, it is obviously meter gauge, so one meter. And for narrow gauge, it is 0.762 meter. All these values you should remember, right? Now you see the answer is asked in centimeter. So I'll convert this 1.676 in what? In centimeter, I get what? 167.6 b square by 127 r. See, even if you don't know the calculation, you are not. You know, you you are. Uh, you see this calculator. You are not allowed in the H P C L exam. You see, you can guess. This is the only value greater than one, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So this is the right answer. Yes. 38 question, right? Some questions on the Marshall design. You see, the B M A is given. And the BB is given. BMA is given and BB is given, right? And then they have asked BFP. What is this BFP? BF means voids filled with bitumen. That is what the bitumen percent by total. Now the bitumen percentage will be what the total voids in mineral aggregates minus what the air voids, right? So this is how much I can say 15 minus 4.5, that is equal to 10.5. So this is 10.5. The total voids is 15, and into 100 I will do to find out the voids filled with bitumen. So voids filled with bitumen is what? The voids of bitumen divided by total voids. So in voids, what will be there? The air will be there, or what? Or bitumen will be there. So this is way you can solve. This is what 70 percent. Next 39. Yes. On plate load test, okay. On plate load test. So in plate load test, remember that if you are using different diameters, if you are using different diameters, then what will happen? I'll get different modulus of subgrade reaction. Yes. Suppose I am getting here K1, I will get here K2. But the K1 A1 is equal to K2 A2. This relationship we get, right? So now if you are solving this, you see. 
for 30 centimeter we got how much 16 so for 75 centimeter how much get? simple 30 into we got how much for 30 16 is equal to suppose this is k2 and the size is how much your 75 yes so how much i will get here i'll get k2 is equal to your 6.4 a getting yes actually this is not uh, this a is not actually the diameter you see this a is not actually diameter the a is actually the radius yes it's the radius but you see if this is the relationship right if i just multiply two both sides what i get k1 d1 is equal to k2 d2 so i can use relationship for what for diameter also right for diameter also i can use same thing right yes last question yes very straightforward direct formula radius of relative stiffness right radius of relative stiffness l is given by which formula l is given by which formula the last question l is given by which formula hmm? a no or b or c or d yes the answer is b now if you're getting confused in this you know radius of relative stiffness in the examination then very easy you see e is what modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity is given in kg per centimeter square you see this is kg per centimeter square right h is in centimeter so centimeter cube thickness of the slab divided by Poisson's ratio has no unit so 12 and k is what modulus of that is what kg per centimeter cube so what happens with kg kg get cancelled 12 has no units you see centimeter will go and become what centimeter to the power 6 so this will get cancelled become what centimeter to the power 4 and then 1 by 4 then only i am getting this in centimeter so if you get confused anywhere in the formulas you can always use what units okay so if you use units thing you see this is wrong because half this is wrong because 1 by 3 now confusion was between a and b and obviously it will be 1 minus mu square <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much. This were the 40 questions. I can say most probable questions for your highway. Hope I try to cover all the important portions which are asked in the examinations. Okay, I can say objective pattern. See, there are long questions also, but you know those questions is very less chance that they will ask in the examination. Yes, they're not required. So evening we will revise all these concepts. 6 p.m. We will revise other formulas. Okay, pertaining to highway and surveying. Okay, I will be discussing the formulas and what type of questions they will ask in the examination. Okay, okay, I will discuss not only the formulas but the confusions in the formulas, right? Many times what happens? Formula we know, we get confused with the formula, right? So that formula discussion also I will do today at 6 p.m. Please come all everyone. And this uh, marks our end uh, for me actually. We have, you know, environment also and other important subjects. Krishna sir will take for HPCL. 21st, we have a marathon, okay. We'll solve around 100 questions from all subjects. Sorry, from all subjects, me and Krishna sir will take, okay. For all subjects, we'll solve what? 100 questions, okay. Marathon is there. And 28th and 29th, we will take a full test of Bell and HPCL, okay. So these will be, you know, a mixture of all the subjects, okay, here 100 questions for well, 85 questions for HPCL, 120 questions, okay. So it will be very useful for you, not only for this examinations, upcoming SSC and other examinations which are targeting, okay. So please uh, study hard and attend these sessions, okay, and complete them. So if you, are, if you want to solve more questions for other subjects, I have already taught, you know, I have solved 40 questions of geotech, 30 questions of steel structures, most probable surveying also 40 questions okay so when i'm solving all these questions i am not only solving them i'm discussing them also so actually if you see the questions numbers increases yes then you know in consolidation and all i have solved here 50 questions okay this is 50 questions this is 50 questions i have solved for geotech okay this is 50 questions i have solved soil mechanics so you can see 150 questions from only soil mechanics, right? <laughs> so 150 questions from soil mechanics, okay? And if you study all these 150 questions, okay? And understand the basics and all, it will be very useful for your uh, upcoming examination. Hydrology irrigation, yesterday we also solved 40 questions, very interesting questions we solved, yes. Yes, 
so thank you very much that ends uh, today's lecture see you at 6 pm okay today okay for the formula series thank you very much bye if you like the lecture you can comment in the comment section and write some good words for me i'll feel good thank you